to your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy you walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I haven't been disrespected to you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. (laughs) 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Welcome to my The Little Mermaid movie review. Hi guys. Uh I wanted to get this out really quick while it was still in my head. I just came back from the woke live action remake of The Little Mermaid. And at first I I was sort of sitting there with my arms folded, like, okay. What are they possibly going to do that's going to be better than the original? Uh, And I found myself as the film went on. I was fully nostalgia baited by this. Uh, No pun intended because of the fishy theme. They they put the nostalgia bait on the fishing pole. They threw it out and I swam up to it and bit. Uh, I, I just I did feel I mean, it's such a great story that it's it is hard to fuck this up. I would say overall, if you're like in your 30s or 40s or whatever, and you have a, like a niece or a daughter in your life and you enjoyed the story, like just just go. OK, if you're not somebody who needs to protest Disney at, at every turn, like and you just it's a nice story. Go. It's, it's, it's not going to blow you away. It was cute. I found it cute. Uh, the CGI is not great, and I don't know if I'm looking at it through adult, an adult lens of being uh, more discerning, because I just remember as a kid watching the original Little Mermaid in 1990 and just being so impressed. I feel like the the mermaid swing, like I believe the mermaid swimming more in the original than I did with this. And did you know that the guy who's uh, who wrote the score alan menken he actually won an oscar for the music for the little mermaid uh at the academy awards in 1990 so as soon as notes of these songs started to play i did i did really feel myself uh getting pulled in so it's a great story um you know what i wish i had done was watch the original little mermaid first before going into this because some things i remembered really really well and some things i was like oh yeah i'm i'm not sure if they made changes uh or what they did okay they did a good job of making black ariel happen you know they kind of situated her in in this kind of it seemed like a jamaican town like it seemed like there's it's it's jamaica up above and it seems like it's it's jamaican under the sea as well yet king triton played by javier bardem who did amazing by the way like actually hit a couple scenes where he was talking about how much he was going to miss his daughter that actually did make me tear up i don't know if that's a compliment like i basically cry at the drop of a hat sometimes so I don't know if that's a testament to his acting or that's just like me being a chick. But I think Javier Bardem as King Triton did a really amazing job. They did make it make sense. They were kind of in this, you know, Jamaican area. And then, of course, there was this meeting of of all the mermaids at one point, all of King Triton's daughters. And, of course, you have like very predictably an Asian mermaid that I'm sure swam up from a wet market in Wuhan or something. They have an Indian mermaid who, you know, swam down from, I don't know, Dubai or Bombay or something. And then of course, you you know, you have like United colors of Benetton mermaids. And I was actually surprised to see one blonde white mermaid. I was like, wow, look at that. Some white representation. This is, 
Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I felt seen. Um, it, it was funny at one point. I don't think this was intentional, but there was kind of a little bit of a dig at the actress who played the little, the little mermaid. Hallie, ba Hallie Bailey is her name. And of course, you guys have seen the memes. Tons of people have been making jokes at how far apart her eyes are. I saw one that was a pretty funny meme of like almost like a mapped out, you know, like it's three miles between each eye. But it was really funny because at one point, one uh, one of the characters describes, you know, Halle Bailey's character, Little Mermaid, as having a far away look in her eye. And I was like, don't you mean a far apart look in her eye? Uh, what is funny about this? And I was just like, wow. So this, you know, if you guys don't know the story of the Little Mermaid, uh, Ariel falls in love with Eric, who's a prince, but like he's not just your average prince. He's like a cool prince who has like deep down uh, like a blue collar spirit because he wants to help his guys with the boat. He's very athletic. He's not a pussy. He's very hands on. He's swinging around on ropes and shit. And oh, a great job by the dog, by the way, whatever the dog actor was that played Max did incredibly so props to that dog actor. So Ariel sort of climbs aboard this ship uh, that's on this voyage, I guess, I don't know, looking for jewels or selling drugs. It's not clear what Eric and the gang are really doing. Um, but she like falls in love with him. She's like, oh, my God, we're the same. Like, I, I'm the daughter of a of a king and he's the, the son of a king, it seems. And we're both like we both don't want to live our lives the way our parents want to and then so she's like lusting after him i swear to god she was she was checking out his ass like the the camera angle for because she's like down below the boat and you just see like a bunch of men's asses so i think she's very transfixed by the male form uh it's clear after that scene that for sure ariel wants eric's thingamabob and there are plenty on that ship but she uh she clearly has her sights set on eric so she falls in love. The, the The ship crashes into a Titanic looking type, not a glacier, but some rocks and shit that randomly, of course, appear the last second in front of the ship. The ship splits in half. Ariel saves Eric, you know, brings him to shore. She's kind of singing to him. And then it's like I was very much I felt the nostalgia because the scenes that were exactly the same as the original like got me because this was my favorite movie as a little girl, my absolute favorite Disney movie. It was this Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin were like my top three, but like Little Mermaid, that's like my fucking jam. So there was the scene where like he's coming to and he, and he sees her face with like she's backlit by the sun. And I was like, oh, that's the scene. Oh, my God. Like I actually forgot she was black for a period of time. So that's nice. <laughs> of course, she jumps in, swims away. Uh, everyone gives her shit for uh, having an interspecial romance. And then, of course, Ursula's character is very interesting because she Ursula is a she is played by Melissa McCarthy who is basically acting like a drag queen in this uh, movie and she has said as much that she takes inspiration from drag queens she claims to have been one I don't know how it's possible because she's a woman but so you can tell like big makeup she's this big fat lady she's you know very upset she was she's like i guess the sister of king triton and and i don't know she's like a single lesbian except without you know she doesn't have cats but she's got eels so her eels are like her cats and the eels spy on her spy for her she sends the eels out to like stalk ariel and like swim around and show ursula this like vision of the they're, they're being creeps basically so Ursula makes this deal with Ariel, like, look, I'll give you legs for three days. And if you can get him, if you can get homeboy to kiss you, like you can stay up there and live forever with your legs and joy. But if he doesn't kiss you, uh, you'll be turned back into a mermaid. And then like, you'll be mine, which is very creepy and very much uh, sounds like grooming. So in part of this deal, she has to sing into a shell. We all know that her voice gets captured into this shell. And what I didn't realize, it's not just her singing voice, like, but her whole ass voice. Like, so she sends her up there. She's got great legs, but she's fucking mute. She can't say shit. So she and, and instead of washing on shore with her legs, she ends up getting captured in this boat, like this big fishing boat covered in seaweed and stuff. They did a good job of not, like, showing her being naked or anything like that. I was worried that they were going to, like, sexualize the character too much. But they didn't, which is nice. And here's what's interesting is, like, 
So Ariel with legs, you know, washes up into this ship. The ship goes, oh, we'll bring her to the castle. They'll know what to do. What? There's no, uh, like, naturalization. There's no, like, immigration process for this island or wherever they live. Anyone new just goes straight to the castle. I'm like, this woman showed up. She's got no family. She's got no job skills. She can't talk. But they're like, yes, of course. Stay as long as you like. Get this girl whatever she needs. And I was like, is this is what is this what Biden is telling the illegals? Like, this is not this is not good. Like, why are they giving her so much shit? She hasn't done anything to deserve it yet. She's just being welcomed in. You know, I don't know. I'm a little touchy because. There have been something like 80,000 illegals that have come into New York. So uh, I'm just a little touchy about illegal aliens right now. So thank God the castle folks sort of took her in because Ariel washed up on shore. I'm like, this girl is three days away from making an OnlyFans. That's right. I said OnlyFans. Um, she looks like she's about to start selling her ass if she doesn't get this guy, Eric, to fall in love. But she, of course, forgets the part of the deal she made with Ursula that she has to get him to kiss her. So now she's just up here like mute, doesn't know that she has to get kissed and like just has no clue. So the crab, I didn't like the CGI Sebastian crab. It looked very creepy. And I really h hated Aquafina as Scuttle the seagull. I thought that like that was grating to listen to Aquafina. The singing was horrible. Her voice was horrible. Th those were like my least favorite parts of it for sure. Um, and my complaint with Ariel, because because obviously when she's underwater, she understands Sebastian. She understands Scuttle. She can speak to all the mermaids, all the animals. But when she's on land with her legs, she doesn't have her voice. They they show that she doesn't understand the seagull and Sebastian anymore. Like the seagull is just like squawk, squawk, squawk. That all she can hear is like squawking. And then like about halfway through the movie, all of a sudden she can understand Scuttle and Sebastian. So that I didn't like. I think they should have done a better job of explaining why she could all of a sudden understand the sea creatures. Um, you know what I can't wait is for the progressive left to use this movie as an argument for transitioning kids. Like, oh, look how happy Ariel was. See, oh, the only thing separating her from happiness were legs. And had her had her father been more supportive, she could have transitioned earlier and Oh, if only King Triton uh, was more progressive, he could have turned Ariel into a woman sooner and put her on puberty blockers. Why didn't he listen? And then at one point, it's very cliched. King Triton was uh, said, I'm so sorry that you had to lose your voice to be heard, but now I hear you. And then it's like you turn around, it's the whole sea kingdom. They're up out of the water and they're like mingling with the humans. So it's nice that they're relationship is the start of what seems like uh better land aqua relations between the land people and the sea people but it's very it's, it was made very clear that ursula is the gender affirming therapist of the sea it's very clear that she uses grooming and manipulation to get to ariel and it's like this is classic surly fat single woman behavior. Now, if Ursula didn't have a huge rift with her brother, King Triton, she'd be a little bit more established now. You know, she's fat, so she's I'm sure she's angry about that. She's got short hair. Uh, her only friends are a couple of eels. So this is like classic sad fat woman stereotype that instead of looking within and fixing herself, she goes, oh, how can I fuck over my brother? I know I will convince Ariel to trans herself. <laughs> Uh, that and I'm like very much Ursula. If she were alive in 2023, would be a gender affirming therapist, and that's definitely the role she played. She she doesn't tell Ariel about any of the side side effects. She doesn't explain the pros and cons. She just kind of uses, well, don't you want to be happy? Don't you want to get that land dick? Don't you want to get Eric's thingamabob? Come on! And then the eels even like push her towards the the witch's brew that she's making. So Ariel was very much rushed into this decision. She was groomed. She was taken advantage of at a vulnerable moment. It was right after a fight with her dad. I was like, okay. I was like, as a fellow uh, woman with daddy issues, I I saw myself in Ariel a little bit. And it was, which was also very funny to me because there was a point in the movie where she got her legs and then she really sucked at swimming. And I was like, here it is. That's what I've been waiting. That's all I wanted to see. A little bit of reality. Okay. She was bad at swimming. 
Okay. If you know what I mean. Horrible. Eric was a better swimmer than her. Okay. So yeah, Ur Ursula really made me angry because I was seeing a lot of comparisons between her and uh, the left woke groomers that we that we all deal with every day. And uh, except Ariel is not going to need hormones for the rest of her life. You know, she's not going to have to take a human growth hormone. And here's the thing, like if King Triton, King Triton ultimately made her fins turn into legs and like let her go be with Eric so she could be happy. But I'm like, hold on. If King Triton can turn fins into legs, why can't he set up a zoom call with all the mermaids that are all over the world? You know, you're going to make fucking, you know, you're going to make a uh, curry in a hurry over there, swim all the way from India, but you can't, you know, get some sort of a, an aqua zoom going on to have this meeting. You're going to make a uh, Ling Ling swim from the Wuhan wet market all the way over here you're not gonna it wouldn't it be easier for you to just use your because he's it's clear he's got the same powers as ursula but uh he's he tries to use them for good and maybe he you know he's old school he values the in-person face-to-face meeting so i guess i understand ultimately but yeah javier bardem was great in this uh melissa mccarthy a little bit annoying she was acting a little bit like just an annoying drag queen in this um so I don't know if I, who would I prefer to, to have play Ursula Lizzo <laughs> Lizzo should have played Ursula. And by the way, like, um, Haley Berry, Halle Berry, Bailey, fuck. Her name is too close to Halle Berry. I don't know what this woman was thinking. Haley Bailey looked fantastic, was adorable. Like her body looked great in this. Like I was very happy with that. There were no obese land whales. There were no fat mermaids. Everybody looked good. So I was happy with that. Um, I, I just, I wish the whole time that she could have sung just a little bit better. Her singing was like, eh. But for me, the nostalgia and my love for this movie like crossed me over into being like, okay, I would give this movie like a five and a half. You know, I would say if it's important to you to protest Disney, then fucking don't go. You'll get over it. But if you have like a little girl in your life, take her to see The Little Mermaid. Uh, I saw a ton of little girls there that seemed very excited. So it was good. You know, go have fun if you want to go do that. Her The singing is very mid. Yeah. And we again, I was very happy that there was no not a lot of uh, weight diversity among the mermaids. They were all in great shape. So. I enjoyed that. Matthew Hammond. It looked so terrible. Aquafina looked awful. She, it was awful. Uh, the, the seagull part was bad. Did you get any snacks or a drink? To bed? Yeah. I always, my go-to is, uh, is popcorn with a, and there's never, I never seem to be able to put enough butter on the popcorn and I got a seltzer and I was, I timed it really, really good because like I was very late because there was such a long line for the snacks. By the time I sat down, it was just like one preview and then the movie started. So even though I was like, 20 minutes late. I, I didn't catch very many previews. So that was good. Thank you, Jesus Davila, for the super sticker. Yeah, I wanted it to be better. Obviously, it's a great story. I wish Halle Berry could have sang better. I wish there was not the obligatory united colors of Benetton mermaids. Like, there didn't need to be one of every type there. And I could have, I would have enjoyed seeing more mermen. There were not enough mermen. Just at the end, there were like a couple, you know, sort of in this final scene tableau of all the mermaids and the land people, you know, joining up. So I could have, I could have used uh, some more of that. But anyway, uh, you'll hear, you'll hear the rest of my thoughts on Friday Night Tights. Uh, but I just wanted to get that out before I go. Carlos X, did you have a letter? Do you have a letter box account? I'd love to read your reviews. On no, I don't. I should look into that. And yes, I am on FNT tonight. That's where I'm going right now. Uh, thank you guys. See you soon.